What's going on coffee lovers? Welcome to the 2023 Paris Cafe Festival. This is the time of the year where the best French baristas, roasters, cafes come together, including international visitors, to show off their talents and share their love for coffees. I have no idea what to expect. I'm expecting to drink a lot of coffee, of course, so on y va. Alright, I'm starting my day with an espresso from Kayo Coffee. I heard about this place, but I haven't visited a cafe, so cheers. It's got a nice punch to it. It's definitely a bit fruity, I have to say. Um, not too bitter, which is nice. So now I'm in line for Kawa Coffee. I'm gonna check out their filter coffee, see what they have to offer. We got a few samples, including a secret batch. So I was just informed that you have to guess the notes and the brewing method in order to win a prize. So I'm not a huge expert in tasting notes, but I'm just here for the adventure. Okay, so it's not super fruity. It's not super strong. Pretty light body, I would say. No idea the brewing method but I'll probably just guess like a pour over or something. There's also a little bit of earthy notes to it as well. All right, so I got here the geisha from Panama. Um, notes of lavender, cherry, and tropical fruits. And it's of a geisha variety, so uh, I'm sure it's gonna be great. Let's give it a try. Mm, nice and clean, I like that. Definitely fruity, yep. Mm, that's solid. I actually think I like it better than the secret one, to be honest. All right, so now I got the Colombia Pariso variety, which has a little bit of a peachy apricot kind of note to it. I've had this in the past, and I love it a lot. So I, I can always trust this, this one for sure. Oh yeah, that peachiness is just so prominent. I can highly recommend this coffee to anyone, even if you're not a coffee lover. If you just drink tea, I'm pretty sure you'll like this one as well. All right, so I'm approaching the Oatly booth. I believe it's the most used non-dairy milk in the barista world, and I see they're handing out free samples of their milk. I've obviously tried it, but uh, I can't turn down a free sample. Okay, so for today, I see that the first roaster is Petrin Couchette. Never heard of them. It sounds French to me. This afternoon, Five Elephant will be roasting, and I'm familiar with them. They are based in Berlin. Try their coffee. I can highly recommend it, so this one will be new for me today. All right, so I didn't come home with a free sample, but I got a flat white, so let's try. Smooth, creamy, love it. Doesn't have that really strong oat taste that you might find in some oat milk, so the espresso has some room to shine. So Decent Pass Packaging is the company that's sponsoring uh, the majority of the cups here. So the ones that are branded with Paris Cafe Festival, they're the ones that are providing the cups for coffee lovers. So something that's quite underrated about making coffee is the water. 99% of it is basically water. And Britta is here to sample their filtering system. If you really want to maximize your coffee experience, definitely focus on the water. And Britta is there to make sure you have the cleanest water out there. All right, so I'm gonna give their coffee a try. They have beans from this Belleville roastery. I'm just gonna have a quick espresso since I have a flat white already in my hand. So let's give it a try. Cheers. Oh, I'm not kidding. I do taste a difference in the consistency. It's a lot lighter, the body is lighter. Super, super clean. I love it. All right, so the roasting championships are underway. We've got a couple judges from all over. One from Five Elephant in Berlin. So let's see how this goes. This is my first ever coffee competition that I'm about to witness. So I think I missed it, but they had some live latte art here organized by All Pro, and I see that Kawa Roasters provided the beans. As you can see, the latte art is faded a little bit, but with non-dairy milk, you can still make some beautiful latte art. So not only can you drink coffee, but you can also paint with it. It's actually quite simple. All you need is some coffee grinds, a little bit of water, and a paintbrush. You can literally do this at home. I haven't painted in a minute, so this is very therapeutic. It's a nice break in between the drinks, and hopefully it turns out nice. 
All right, so that is the final product. Looks like a fresh batch of coffee there. And I'll leave it at that. I don't want to ruin the rest of the design here. So I'm here at Le Marta Cafe, and what they do is they basically recycle old coffee grinds, and they have books here with 75 recipes that you can do with old coffee grinds. So here they have samples of their biscuits, and they're actually really good, so I highly recommend. If you have any coffee grinds, don't throw them away. There are plenty of things that you can do, so you can check out their Instagram, which I'll link down below, and you can check out all the things that you can do with coffee grinds. So I made a mistake, they're actually called the Cogade. So you can go ahead and follow them if you want to learn more about what you can do with coffee grinds. Alright, I'm at the All Pro booth, the competitor to Oatly. I'm a big fan of their coconut milk. I also really like the, the not milk variety, which is almost identical to dairy milk. So I'm gonna go ahead and give their milk a try, although I've tried it before, but can't say no to a free coffee. Alright, let's give this almond milk a try. Cheers. Mm. Mm. It's very obviously nutty, which I really like, so it kind of gives me a bit of a Christmassy kind of vibe to this to this milk. So also very smooth, which I really like. I can recommend this if you want a warm, cozy beverage. The coconut milk tends to be a bit sweet as well, so this is a bit more neutral, earthy. So if you like that taste, then I highly recommend the almond milk. All right, so I'm gonna try these new varieties of non roasted milk. This one's gonna be the banana one. So let's see how this tastes. This one has a nice, uh, cool taste to it. It's, it's very summery, I would say. It's very sweet, but I love banana, so I can highly recommend this one. All right, next up is the macchiato. Obviously a darker color to it. I'm not sure how much caffeine is actually in this, but let's give this one a try. Definitely taste that. Um, not very strong. It's definitely not like a espresso-based drink that is that you would get at a cafe, but it has a bit of a sweetness to it. Obviously, that that bitterness from coffee as well. If you don't want to spend so much on a coffee and you want that fix, definitely give this one a try. Alright, so I'm here at Five Elephant, one of the most notable Berlin roasteries. I'm going to try this one here. This one's apparently the favorite because it's anaerobic. Um, this one is, is a washed from Rwanda. This one I believe I've tried is from Kenya. This one has a bit of a milky one. This one is from El Salvador. So we got a bit of variety from Latin America and Africa. So let's see which one comes out on top for me today. Alright, this one is the Loa filter from Indonesia. Cheers. Mm. That one's good. That one comes with a punch. Very complex, very full. I might come home with these beans, we'll see. But this one is very, very delicious. Alright, this was a Rwandan one, wash process, red bourbon variety, notes of passion fruit, honey, dew, and canela. So let's give this one a try. Yeah, another complex taste profile that tastes a bit of that passion fruit. Not as sweet as I expected, but it's a bit more sour. It's probably also affected by the filter I just drank, but this one's also really good. Next up is the Kenyan variety, the one I believe I've tried before. So I should be familiar with this taste. Let's give this one a try. Definitely a more sour profile. The notes are white grape, vanilla, and sweet lemon peel. So yes, definitely a lot more sour than the other two so far. And finally, the variety from El Salvador with notes of biscuit, orange blossom, and hazelnut. This whole this one tastes a bit more milky. Um, the process is natural, and the variety is red bourbon. So let's give this one a try. It is milky, it tastes a bit more full in terms of body. A little bit of sourness as well, but uh, <laughs> that, I guess that comes from the orange blossom notes. Uh, but yeah, I can definitely recommend this one. I think so far, my favorite is the first one, the lower filter with the anaerobic process from Indonesia. So I'm here at La Menoir, and they specialize in flavoring their milks. This one here is kurkuma, this one is sesame, this one is matcha moringa, this one is dates and butterfly peas, and this one is cacao. So I'm going to try a couple of them and let you know how they taste. So 
So all you really need to do is just mix it with the milk that you warm up in the foamer, and then you have some flavored coffee. Uh, so I'm starting with the green one, which has a base of oat milk and matcha and moringa as the main flavor profiles. Mm, definitely taste that matcha and moringa. Moringa kind of brings it down a little bit. The matcha tends to be quite strong. The moringa tends to balance out the flavor so it's not so harsh. All right, so I'm about to try the blue one, which tends to be the one that they're trying to promote the most. It's quite unique. It's made out of butterfly pea, which is, I guess, a blue flower, as you said. So I'm curious to see how this one tastes. There's also a bit of cashew nuts in it as well. So I'm looking forward to trying this one. Mm. Has a bit of spice to it. I taste the cashew as well. It's really, really, really good. Kind of tastes like sesame a little bit with a bit of spice. Very, very unique. Very unique. I haven't tasted anything like this before. So yeah, I can definitely recommend this, this flavor. Right. If you've never had nitro coffee, I highly recommend it. It's similar to a, a beer from TAP, uh, except coffee versions. I don't drink alcohol, so this is the next best thing in my opinion. If you haven't tried it, it's rather smooth on top, like a, a typical TAP beer. Um, and of course you have that nice, strong hit of caffeine as well. So the company that makes this is Masalto, and everything they do is organic, used slowly in cold temperatures for 24 hours, and there's a high concentration of caffeine, which is nice for those who want a little bit of a kick, and it's also low in calories, so it's good to try. Cheers. Mm, nice and smooth. It kind of tastes like alcohol, not alcohol, but like the same feeling when you drink alcohol. It's not very strong, it's not as strong as I expected, but it is super, super refreshing. So I highly recommend it drinking something like this in the summertime. So it's been about four hours of drinking coffee and I definitely need a little bit of a break. So here I am at Kodama, who specialize in infused teas, homemade infused teas. So I'm gonna give them a try and see what they have to offer. So this one is the Eau Petit Bonheur. It's an Earl Grey with a taste of peach and rosemary. Let's give this one a try. Very refreshing, very light I would say, not too strong. I like it. It's a nice little break from caffeine for sure. So DeLong, I feel like kind of blew up in the past few years, at least from my perspective. Maybe it's due to Brad Pitt being the face of the brand. So yeah, let's just give this coffee a try. They're using beans from Cafe Luga. It looks or Luga. It looks like a French brand to me. So it looks like it's a different drink. It's like something a bit creamy. I have no idea what it is. So I'm gonna let you know what it tastes like. Mm. It's like a cold latte kind of taste. It's very creamy. There's like some black residue there. I don't know what it is. It's very, very refreshing and also quite sweet. So it tastes like, uh, is that oat milk or sesame? Not sure. It's quite nice actually. So here is a sneak peek into the French barista championships. To my knowledge, it's a very comprehensive competition in which the baristas select high quality beans, choose a brewing method that suits the bean, tells the story as they brew, and then there were judges right in front of them to get a nice impression of the presentation overall. And so you really need to be a showman as well, on top of knowing your stuff. Definitely recommend checking one out uh, if you want to learn a little bit more about about the story behind certain beans, certain baristas, and just to get a full vibe of the cafe festival here.